about time. I've been waiting for this. You're not from here. We got a tradition called blood payments. It means I get a piece of you for what you took from my family. You'll pick it up. God of War's return, after a little over four and a half years, is significant for a number of reasons. While the 2018 God of War got a PlayStation 5 patch in early 2021, boosting it to 4K 60fps, Ragnarok is the series' first true release on the PS5. And this time around, you can explore all nine Norse realms, be it the exquisite beauty of Svartalheim, the icy embrace of Niflheim, or the eeriness of Alfheim. Ragnarok looks great and performs exceptionally. You can do 4K 30fps for best visuals, 60fps and dynamic resolution for more performance, or even 120fps if your TV is capable of that. And it delivers all of this without any fan noise that we had on the PS4 with God of War. Ragnarok's gorgeous visuals on the PS5 are helped by its filmmaking language. It's as cinematic as before, told in a deceptive one-shot that never cuts away. That illusion is broken whenever Kratos travels through all white portals, which is how Ragnarok cleverly hides its loading screens. But those are technological demands. The cinematography is married with writing, pacing and direction that's mostly very good. It felt like I was watching a movie. In fact, the Ragnarok cutscenes were so engaging at times that I didn't want them to end because then I would have to play. But that's how it goes. Because games have to give players something to do, their stories nearly always suffer as a result. That happens on Ragnarok 2. That said, it seems foolish to complain when the playing is as enjoyable as it's here. There's more variety in attack, for one. If you already had the Leviathan Axe in your hand in God of War, the triangle button on the dual sense did nothing. But on Ragnarok, holding down the triangle button covers the axe with frost. Your next melee or ranged attack will then deliver an additional chill to your enemies. You can do something similar with the Blades of Chaos, which are available from the start on Ragnarok. Except instead of frost, the effect is naturally fiery. <laughs> Additionally, Kratos' movement can add in combat too. On Ragnarok, you can sprint off cliffs and slam into enemies, dealing area of damage. And the Blades of Chaos function as a grappling hook, allowing you to climb places you couldn't otherwise, bring down objects that help unlock loot or new areas, or even just latch onto enemies to wreak havoc. Your two weapons, the Axe and the Blades, can not only be upgraded as you earn XP and gather resources, but you can also slot in runes for elemental effects. Both weapons offer a light and heavy runic attack. They are great for crowd control and dealing extra damage, though you do need to be wary of their cooldown timers. What I love about God of War Ragnarok is that it's a lesson in how you can do more with less. There are just two weapons here, but still such a variety of play. You can charge your weapons with frost or fire, hold down buttons to trigger special attacks, and of course, line up attacks in a coordinated fashion to maximize damage dealt. Kratos and Atreus can be taught a variety of skills too, which build on their melee, ranged, technique and instinct talents. As you make use of these skills and unlock new tiers, you can decide in what ways to improve them. This is really interesting because character growth is decided in some ways by your playstyle, and not just an arbitrary assignment of earned XP. To be fair, that does exist in God of War Ragnarok, as I noted, but it's also molded in part by how you approach combat. All of it comes together for some old school level game design. The enemies that routinely pop out of the ground are meaningless fodder to help you level up for the story baddies. At times, it does feel like a loot simulator, as if your journey is being stretched to allow God of War Ragnarok place loot in strategic spots. But it's nowhere as annoying as the approach other games have taken, some from the house of PlayStation itself. It helps that you're immediately pulled into the narrative, with characters easy to admire and root for. Ragnarok is a coming-of-age story for the inquisitive and teenage Atreus, with his protective father trying to shield him from the dangers of the Nine Realms. And even when the story is not progressing, the dynamic and exchanges between Kratos, Atreus, and the severed head of Mimir serve you well. Ah! 
But there's a lot to take in here, with Ragnarok feeling like two games in one as you push deeper in. And I'm not alone in that sentiment. The developers felt the same way, and even considered splitting God of War Ragnarok into two games, as its scope became much larger than they had originally planned. It would have turned God of War's Norse era into a trilogy, which is always an alluring prospect. But they didn't want to spend 15 years telling one story, what with both the 2018 God of War and Ragnarok having taken five years apiece in development. And hence, Ragnarok is both the second and third chapter, in a way, if it were a trilogy. It sends you across the nine realms in the hunt for identity and a desire to stave off war, as you deal with quests for vengeance and battle a series of monsters of all sizes, armed with a bunch of new tools and combat techniques. All of it set against the backdrop of the end of days. That's our cue. Come on, hurry! I'm coming, I'm coming! Frostfolk of Eggsman, what was that for? You'll see soon enough. Thanks for watching. If you're planning to buy God of War Ragnarok, talk to us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And for more gaming and tech videos, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Gadgets360.